Hello guys and welcome to a new wargame video today by me Vulcan. Today I wanted to bring you a tutorial for the armory. Now what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be looking over the NATO logistic recon and possibly infantry units and going through the stats for them and telling you what they're good and bad for. So if I just uh, go into the armory, you can do this on your game and listen to my commentary while you're going through the units if you like. That could also work. So anyway, I've turned off all of the uh, packed units on the right side here at the top of the armory. Just got the left ones activated. And we're going to go through today the logistic recon and possibly the tanks for the NATO side. So let's start off with the first logistic unit that you can get in the armory. This here is the Sultan. It's the British Command Armour. Now, I think this is argu arguably the best command vehicle in the game. The reason being, it does have a machine gun with a lot of rounds. It can protect itself against light helicopters. If you're playing NATO versus NATO, you can take out a gazelle with that machine gun. The speed is 80 kilometers per hour. It can get out of very sticky situations quite easily. The front armor is one and the side armor is one. This means that it can also take a artillery shell very, very close. As long as a vehicle has at least one armor on the front, it's classed as armored, which means that it won't take as much splash damage from artillery. That is something that is very well worth knowing. Then the operational range isn't great and neither is the fuel capacity, but either way you don't necessarily need it that for a command vehicle if you keep it well defended or out of sight. So the Sultan is, you get to bring in two of them for a battle, so you need to bring in the Sultans plus another type of command vehicle if you would like to capture up to four sectors. The command, the Sultan is definitely one of my recommendations for the logistic units for NATO side. The M11 4A1 is the first American unit I'll be talking about today. This is the armored command vehicle for the American side. They also have another version of this, the M577 CPC. It's a different thing completely. The M11 4A1 comes with a Browning machine gun which has 2000 rounds similar to the Sultan can shoot down light helicopters. The only thing with this vehicle is it's very slow in comparison to the Sultan. does have the same front and side armor. Same operational range but more fuel capacity. So you can probably go further with this thing but it's very slow. It's not going to get itself out of sticky situations, which is why I wouldn't recommend it. There are other vehicles that fill the role a lot better. The M151A1 Command is the one of the first vehicles that you can get as or on war game new to the game. I would not recommend using this for the pure fact it's not armored. If a command if a command vehicle with no armor gets an artillery shell next to it or two, it will literally blow up and you lose those 200 points which you've brought in. As you can see there's no front, side, rear or top armour. The speed is 55 kilometers per hour, not very fast. You've got the operational range is massive with a fuel capacity of 60 litres but the thing is you don't want, you won't be using that. That's, it's, it's a useless stat. So to me, don't take that. The M577 CPC, I briefly touched on this already, but this is an extremely armoured vehicle. Now, what this is good for is if you have a front line where you're not sure if they're going to be able to push against it very easily, but you want to capture that sector, put one of these in there. That's because it has a lot of armour. You can see two front, one side, one rear, one top. That means it can take like a rocket or two before it dies, which is very, very useful against any infantry that may ambush it. It's not, it's faster than both the M15101 Command and the M11 4A1. So 
even though it's more armoured, it's still faster. So I don't see why you wouldn't want to take this. This is probably my second choice. The M577G is exactly the same. It's just the German variant and it has a different camo. Camo's not too important in this game unless you zoom right in and really want to see it. So from a distance, you can take either one of those. I tend to take the American one because it's got a better camo and that's just what I prefer. Now we're on to the command helicopters. Now these are very situational aircraft. A command helicopter is a very strange thing. They're useful if you work your entire strategy around one. There are some maps where it can benefit from you having a command helicopter and rushing that command point, capturing it very, very quickly, then bringing in reinforcements at that point. The only trouble with that is that it only has a speed of 225 kilometers per hour, which is not very fast, and it needs to have helicopter reach, um, helicopter escort, otherwise it will get shot down very easily, having no armor. None, no helicopters have armor anyway, but the point is that it can be shot down very quickly because it doesn't have much health. The VAB PC, this is the fastest command vehicle in the game with a speed of 90 km per hour. The front armour is one, given, making it an armoured command vehicle can take artillery shells nearby it. You've got a op massive operational range and fuel capacity for that vehicle, plus the bonus Browning machine gun. So this makes it a very mobile uh, command vehicle and this is a good vehicle to take if you want to be very mobile around the map. The only trouble with this vehicle is is it's actually 10 points more than any of or 10 or 20 points more than any of the other command vehicles on the deck or in the armory. So you may struggle with other aspects like defending it. So it's it's used to be mobile and capturing points quickly as long as you've got it defended because it can't take as many hits as maybe a Sultan or an M577. So that's the, basically the command vehicles. They range from 200 to 240 points to, to bring into the battle. Obviously the cheapest is the unarmored one, M151A1 command and the most expensive is this VAB PC and the command helicopter. So be careful if you're bringing in either of those. Now we'll move on to the logistics. Now the first logistics aircraft that we have is the Super Chinook. This is the best helicopter logistic uh, I feel in the game. That's because it has a fuel capacity of 2000 litres, that is the amount of uh, basically resupply that it carries. I like to call it resupply not fuel because you can both rearm and refuel with fuel in this game, which, which is kind of like a, a bit of a weird thing. But anyway, it's quite fast. 300 kilometers per hour for a supply helicopter is very fast. It has no armor, but it has a lot of health. Health isn't actually given to you in the stats of the armory. You kind of just have to work it out as you go along. I think this has about eight bars of health, which is a very good for a helicopter, but it's very prone to being artied because it's a very large vehicle. Size does matter when it comes to these vehicles. As you can see, this is very big. Uh, that it's shown by the uh, top stat under the specifications. Now they only cost 75 to bring in, which I think is a bargain compared to the Chinook which is 60 but actually carries 500 litres less. It's the same speed and the same size but it's going to cost you a lot and that extra 500 litres is basically going to save your ass a lot of the time. So basically as I said the Chinook's very similar. It's the British variant. I do like to bring it in in my British deck just to be patriotic but that's the only reason I would ever suggest bringing that in. Now we're moving on to the FOB, same on both sides, same on both NATO and PACT. The FOB is, well, essential for some strategies and not so much for others. If you're a Russia, then you won't want to take an FOB on your deck at all. If you want to be very defensive and use artillery, you're going to want an FOB or two or three. So it's really dependent on your specific strategy, but there's not really much else to say. Now the Hemt is the only armoured ground 
vehicle that can carry supplies on the NATO side. And it's a very, very good vehicle. The Hemt is fast to a certain extent. Only goes 60 kilometers per hour, but that's all you need really for a supply vehicle. It's not going to be running away from units anytime soon. As if it gets close too close to enemy units, it'll get captured. So there's there's no point in really worrying about that. But as you can see, with the one front armor, that means it's an armored vehicle again. And that means that it can take artillery shells nearby. The fuel capacity is 1,500 liters. That's only 500 less than the Super Chinook. And it only comes in at a cost of 30 supply. Now that is a bargain. So I would definitely recommend bringing in that vehicle there. Now this supply truck, the MD Jupiter, is the first supply truck that you actually get in the game and is useful to a certain extent. What I would recommend using the MD Jupiter for is pushing with infantry. Because you don't necessarily want to waste a hemp with infantry you can stack a couple of MD Jupiters and when they're empty just drive them into the enemy and hopefully they'll just capture them and it'll push up their unit limit because there is a unit limit in war game so basically if you send them your vehicles to them they will capture it raising their vehicle their unit limit meaning they can't bring in as valuable units later on in the game or unless they destroy them before they get to their lines which is often what players who know what they're doing would do but anyway you can see it's only got a speed of 50 kilometers per hour it uses doesn't have very good off-road capacity as you can see by the wheels it's basically a truck um, the hemp works better off-road because it does have off-road wheels although this is not stated in the stats there is a lot of things like that 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 can affect the maneuverability of a vehicle for example if i go back to the command vehicles quickly you can see that some of the some of them have tracks some of them do not for example the vabpc does not have tracks but the sultan does so that means sultan won't get stuck in the mud as much and the vabpc will so that's another thing to sort of think about tracks are better than than tires and wheels off road but on roads they will go a lot slower than wheeled vehicles so it's the sort of balance there that makes uh, some units worth getting in certain situations finally you have the SA Puma now this is the only French resupply in the game um, it, it's the fastest resupply helicopter at 325 kilometers per hour only has a fuel capacity of a thousand liters though what this vehicle is really good for is when you're doing pushes around the edge of a map if you're doing a massive flanking maneuver with a lot of light tanks or you want to just basically get around behind the enemy Pumas are great for keeping up with those rushes they can go backwards and forwards keeping them resupplied and refueled and that is what these vehicles are really good for. Okay, so that's basically a roundup of the logistics for the NATO side. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Now I'm going to move on to the recon. Okay, so here we are at the recon tab. The first vehicle is the BO-105CB. This is a German recon helicopter. It's very good has very good optics but is not as good as some other air recons that you can get there are three different sig three different signs on the recon units that you can see the first that you can see on the right side of the sange is a just a single binocular this is this means good optics the second one is for example on the BO-105CB is binoculars with two brackets around it that is very good optics the gazelle for example has the brackets and an under bracket which makes it have exceptional optics now that's the easy way to identify how good a recon is so the first of all the BO-105 only has a very good optics for a helicopter that's not very good 285 kilometers per hour is not very good either although the operational and fuel capacity is 
decent and because it's a lot cheaper than for example the gazelle some people may prefer to bring it in however you have to be very careful as it is very weak much like the the gazelle but it's not as good so you're sort of for this kind of recon vehicle you're going to use it in the instance where you're not going to mind losing it as much as you would a gazelle so it's kind of like one of those recons that you would suicide with although i'd never recommend doing that with a recon helicopter moving on to the erc 90 sangue this is the one of the fastest recons i believe it has a speed of 95 kilometers per hour and is armored as you can see by the one front armor can take a reasonable amount of hits from light units however a tank will probably one shot these it has a great operational range and good optics which is not amazing but the gun is really what makes up for all of that the good thing about this tank it's not necessarily a recon i would call this more a support unit purely because it's good at supporting pushes it gives you the sight you need for a close range uh, forest push or something like that that's what these units with only the binoculars around them i.e. good optics are good at the AMX 10RC is a very defensive vehicle in my opinion it has a very accurate gun but it's not great on the move the stabilizer is crap they don't have a stabilizer so you only really get this accuracy when you're sat still which is what makes this a very good defensive vehicle compared to the ERC 90 Sandgate which is a very good offensive vehicle even though it doesn't have a stabilizer as well but it's very good for supporting a tank push the AMX 10RC is the sort of tank that you'd put in the corner of a forest and sit there and basically use it to pick off units that would come towards you or other recons it's, it's a good recon sniper so here you can see the accuracy of 7, an AP power of 5, that is very good um, for a recon vehicle. HE power of 3 makes it decent against infantry, but it only has 25 rounds. So it's, as I say, it's a defensive vehicle. You're not going to be using it a lot because it's going to get through that. As you can see, with 7 rounds per minute, it's going to get through that in less than 5 minutes. The speed is 80 kilometers per hour making it nearly as fast as the ERC Sangay but a, still a good 15 kilometers slower but does have one side armor compared to the only the one front armor of the Sangay. The optics are very good compared which is also a reason that it makes it a defensive vehicle and the operational range is 1000 kilometers with the 750 liter fuel capacity. Okay guys, moving on to the British recon vehicles, we have the Scorpion. This is one of my favourite vehicles just because it's British again. I'm not going to say it's a great vehicle, it's one of those tanks a lot like the Sange that's good for supporting a push. It also is very good for supporting infantry. I find that this tank, because it's got tracks, is very good at slowly pushing through forest with infantry and taking out any armored vehicles that may get in the way however the bad thing about this is that if it comes up against any tanks it will get destroyed as you can see it only has one front and one side armor the speed is only 70 kilometers per hour but that that sort of scales down in a forest to about i don't know maybe 40 or 30 kilometers per hour so it does do well for supporting infantry but if it comes up against anything too heavy it's not going to do very well with a accuracy of three and a ap power of four you're not going to be firing at long range with this tank it's a very close range support tank so the he power power of two also helps it attack enemy infantry a reasonable good fuel capacity makes it keep up with the infantry over long distances and um, if we move on to the scimitar now this is the basically the same thing but it has a different turret and it has an auto cannon so it makes use of the Raden auto cannon which has an accuracy of 4 an AP power of 1 and HE power of 1 so it's not as good I would never recommend using this vehicle it's terrible the operational range is bad the fuel capacity is bad it will never keep up with your infantry 
and the auto cannon fires really really slowly the stabilizer is terrible the front armor of one and one side doesn't make it useful at all the reason it helps with the scorpion is because at least this can actually do damage to infantry with its main cannon the scimitar will be missing the entire time so <laughs> it doesn't make, really make a difference it's just a bad variant of the scorpion and not really recommending to use that at all however it is only 40 you it is only uh, 40 and I have unlocked it just in case I need extra units after I've used up all my scorpions now moving on to the gazelle H AH1 this is um, possibly the best recon helicopter in the game it's very fast as you can see 350 kilometers per hour one of the fastest if not the fastest helicopter in the game exceptional optics makes it you'd be able to go forever in it and not really well you can just sit there and see everything as long as you keep it above a forest it will never sink down like I was showing you in my last tutorial but the only trouble with this is it can get sniped by one missile of an AA that is the only big problem with this it doesn't have much health at all so you've got to keep it at, an, at a distance which is helped by the exceptional optics so you never really need to be in that kind of range you can spot an AA before an AA spots it so that's what it's really good for the operational range is 680 kilometers per hour and 1000 litre fuel capacity depending on how much you move this around it might run out of fuel occasionally but then you just pop it back to base really really quickly because of the speed and then you can put it back out again so there's not much problem there the only trouble with this as I say you will possibly get shot down by one missile which is a lot for the cost because it costs 80 now the AH-1 SNEB is exactly the same it just comes with an armament so you get 14 rockets it's not even decent for command sniping because the rockets are so inaccurate what I would only say this is good for is if you're really in desperate need of slowing down a rush that's the only way I could see this being reasonably useful the rockets aren't great anyway moving on we've got the M113 ACAV this is a similar to the M114A1 command vehicle it just comes with three machine guns it's not very good very slow well armored but it's it's basically an anti-infantry recon vehicle which isn't something you normally need I haven't unlocked it I've never used it before so I can't really say how it works in battle but I can't imagine it's that great the M14 the M114A2 is the upgraded version of the command vehicle except from it's not a command vehicle it's a recon it comes with the uh, good optics and an auto cannon instead a very inaccurate auto cannon but can be useful uh, in a defensive situation if somebody's pushing up against you you could probably make use of this vehicle to help you defend the armor is one front one side speed is quite slow good optics is not great for any recon vehicle really uh, operational range is rubbish so I don't really know how well you're gonna do with this it's again I haven't unlocked it so I'm not gonna give too much information on that vehicle we now move on to the M151A2 MUT this is the recon Jeep that you the first unlock it's uh, got a speed of 80 kilometers per hour it's a reasonable vehicle to have on your deck and spots rushes tank pushes all sorts of stuff like that very easily the operational range is 1000 kilometers and the fuel capacity is 65 liters it can make it go for miles you can ride all around the map finding everything that the enemy has I haven't unlocked the second variant of it which has a machine gun and an MMG the reason for that is because I just end up turning it off all the time you can turn off the weapons by clicking on them in the bottom of the uh, screen but basically the good thing about this is that it doesn't have a weapon that's what makes it good you can you can hide it somewhere and it won't accidentally attack something and give away its position that's why I haven't unlocked the second variant of it because you never really run out of the first slot they're only cost 30 each and they're very good for just scouting around that's what they're amazing for now we move on to a very controversial unit on the NATO side is the M3 Bradley, Bradley CV, CFV that is basically one of my favorite units but I wouldn't use it very often 
It has a very accurate auto cannon. It has a very accurate ATGM. The second variant actually has an accuracy of 10 on its ATGM. Basically, the difference between the first and second variant is that the ATGM is better on the second. That is the only difference, and it's definitely worth the extra five points. So if you are going to get this, definitely get the M3A1 Bradley CVC. Both of them have one front, one side, one rear and one top armour. The optics is very good, which makes them amazing tank snipers. They Basically, what you do with these vehicles is you, you, roll, you ride them around the map in packs of maybe two or four. And then as soon as you spot like a tank convoy or some any any sort of valuable vehicles, you can just like sit at a distance and fire at them from max range because you have that recon ability on the vehicle itself. You don't need a separate vehicle to do that for you. Although some people would complain that you should probably take a specific unit per roll. So like say have a specific ATGM unit for a specific target and then have a recon vehicle to go with it. For example, you would have the MUT with the M15-1A2 ITO. So then that would work very nicely. However, this recon vehicle, the Bradley, has it all in one, which some people would prefer. And that's what I like about it, but I don't tend to use it that much because it does get countered very easily by heavy packed tanks. For example, the T-80U or the uh, T62 MV, for example, they will both easily out snipe a Bradley because they don't. The Bradley doesn't have the armor armor compared to the tanks firing back at it. So it does have a reasonable fast speed, can get around, does have tracks, can go through forest reasonably easy. The fuel capacity is okay. The operational range is not great, so you may have to keep a resupply like a hemp with it the entire time just to keep those itos stocked up and the fuel but other than that i think this is generally a good vehicle but it's very much up to you whether you like to you not use it or not now we move on to the kiowa which is a vehicle a recon helicopter an american recon helicopter you there are three variants of this you've got the first one which comes with a gatling cannon which is great for sniping command vehicles but is a very slow vehicle in comparison to the gazelle only go, going 260 kilometers per hour and doesn't have uh, the ex exceptional optics which it really needs the second variant has the exceptional optics and is slightly faster has a browning machine gun and rocket pods it only has seven rockets though which isn't great and the browning machine gun can't do as much damage as the gatling cannon so you, what you're doing here is you're kind of sort of taking the exceptional recon over the command snipe ability so that's the difference between those two kind of uh, variants of that helicopter the last variant of the helicopter is the kiowa wr this has Hellfire missiles, it has four of them. These are the same Hellfire missiles that you get on the Apache and they are very, very good for sniping tanks and command vehicles at that. Like, because they have an accuracy of 10 and AP power of 16, they can pretty much one-shot any tank as long as they don't hit it in the front armor. If a, heavy, uh, if a really heavy tank gets hit in the front armor, it's like unlikely to die by any ATGM one-shot. But if it hits it in the side, which helicopters are very good for, then it will do a lot of damage. The only thing that I don't like about these vehicles is they're very slow. So if you get caught out by any AA that's been hiding in a forest, then you're not going to be able to get away as quickly as maybe the Gazelle because it only has 280 km per hour compared to the Gazelle's 350 km per hour. But the good thing about the Kiowa, similar to the Bradley that I was talking about, is good for spotting and taking out tanks. That is probably its biggest perk. The exceptional optics also allows you to use it as similar to the gazelle keeping it back from in uh, at a massive distance and uh, scouting out the surrounding area without anything even being able to attack it the operational range and fuel capacity is also reasonably good moving on to the sp z11 2 curs this is the other starter com um, recon vehicle <laughs> honestly i don't get to see this used very much a lot of people move on from this very quickly and the reason being is that it's cost 30 but it's it's not great. I would much rather have a vehicle like the Mutt without a weapon 
that sort of fills the same role. It only has a good optics. It's, it's one of those sort of defensive things that it's very sort of situational whether these are actually going to help you out or not. If somebody pushes in with loads of APCs and stuff towards a group of four of them maybe, then you, you might win. But the trouble is that their the auto cannon so inaccurate, it's, it's not really going to do very well. Moving on to the looks, possibly my favorite ground recon unit. This has a accuracy of three auto cannon, which I, you wouldn't think is that great because I've been saying so quite all along. But the the highest auto cannon that you can get, I think, is the Bradleys at six accuracy. So basically, this has got about fifty percent accuracy of the Bradley. But the good thing is. It has that good front and side armor and the speed you need to to ride around. What what this is really good for is it's a proper scout. It allows you to move around the map really quickly and take out slightly armored units without much trouble. And that's what it's really good for. The front side of one, fr front armor of one, side armor of one. Speed of 85 kilometers per hour does get stuck in the mud occasionally though because of its wheels, but if you keep it in hedgerows and stuff, it's it's very small. So well, it's not very small. It's just small, but it will not get very picked out very easily. The upgrade to that is the Lux A1, which actually comes with very good optics, making it even better with and an accuracy of five on its auto cannon, which is also very good. So paying ten extra, you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. The V150. Is the next tank I'll be talking about. This is the last recon vehicle for the NATO side. It has four variants. The first variant has a twin machine gun, which is not great. Very fast though and good for zooming around the map, but it does have wheels, can get stuck in the mud in the middle of forests. Front armor of one, making it an armored vehicle, can take a few artillery shells. The operational range of 650 kilometers is okay for, and the Fuel capacity of 350 litres is also very good. The 20mm version of this is basically the same thing but with an auto cannon. Basically with these variants it costs you 5 more per variant and each one has a slightly better armament. So this one has an auto cannon, this one has a better, well a main gun which is similar to the Scorpion's main gun and a machine gun to go with it which can pepper down infantry but doesn't do great same speed same armor and finally the last one has a big gun making it similar to the ERC Sange although it's slower that's the the difference here so basically this V190 150 90mm is basically the ERC 90 Sange but it costs exactly the same it's just slower so in my in my opinion the ERC Sange is better for the same role. So that's basically been the logistic and recon for the NATO side. I hope this has helped you guys out in picking your units. My own recommendations is that you take the Sultan and one of the M577s for your command vehicles, use the Super Chinook for helicopter logistics, take an FOB if you want one, definitely take the Hemp. The recon units I would suggest are the Gazelle AH1 and the Lux. Um, you can look at taking a Bradley if you want to try out that playstyle, but honestly, it's a big risk. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I know it hasn't been much really to show, except from the stats. So, anyway, I hope it's been informative enough. And if you like these videos, please let me know because I'll do another one next week for the tanks and the infantry and hopefully I'll get through that nicely. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.